What you doing? What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Yeah, we don't know if this guy was a little bit, you know, had mental issues or a little bit mentally handicapped. Sitting here doing drugs in a neighborhood where people just murder you or rape you or something and you, you're not even, even worried. Oh, look, you know, they're upset that uh, somebody's told them off. You know, it happens. Oh, f man. I went through the door first. The suspect was sitting on the couch when he saw me, he broke out the front of the shack. A chase then ensued. Lost out this rough, eh? <sighs> okay, just wait for me. I just need to get rid of this shit quickly. Cheers. Drive safe. I'm late on you, girl, bro. Pick up our informer. He's gonna jump in, he's gonna show us where our suspect is. Um, I'm sitting in the back seat so I can keep him covered. So we built up quite a good uh, rapport and a good uh, relationship with him. I don't trust any of the so he's gonna sit in the front so I've got him covered. A few weeks ago we met an informer. How's it going? What's going on? What's going on? What do you want? What information, brother? What information? Any information you give? Cop or what? Not a cop, brother. Just want the information. Who sent you? I want about who sent me. I've got, I've got other guys that work with me. It's all about getting paid, brother. Okay, then let's call the informer Joe. The relationship has actually turned into something that's mutually beneficial, whereby the information he's giving us is valuable information. Here's a guy, here's a guy. What's happening, brother? Yo, what's up? This man, hold up the windows. What's happening? Yeah, what's Hello, brother. Yeah, what's up? We're looking for a cat burglar. Uh, his speciality is slithering through electric fences and climbing to the second, third story of apartment blocks um, where he gets inside and gets away with various items, mainly laptops, cell phones, wallets. The problem is this guy can do between five and ten apartments in a single night. Listen man, I've seen this that you have been looking for for some time, you know what I'm saying? Isn't this other shake, you know? There's house breaking now. Yeah, the house breaking and all the raves are you know, that you told me on the phone, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I know where is at, I know exactly where you can, you can get him right now, you know what I'm saying? It's a shake, some funny shake. When we got information from the informer that uh, this guy is a, a very good climber and he knows how to work an electric fence, um, we knew it was our guy. Man, okay. I've been there twice, you know, in 45 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Check sure, everything. Sure, as, sure. as much as we're speaking now, that is there, you know what I'm saying? Right, give me a shout if everything's okay. If you need anything, just let me know. 10 4. It's quite risky going into the squatter camps because you don't actually know. You don't know if the lead is real, you don't know. You don't exactly know what and the worst thing is when you're walking through you've got a lot of people that follow you so you've got to always keep your hand on your gun you've got to always be alert because you don't know if somebody's going to come out the shack stab you with a knife throw a rock at you because at the end of the day they all live together and they actually stick they stick together these guys so it's it's very risky for us going in here having informant in your car is is dangerous because you can get bullets through your car 
You don't know if the informant, if somebody's tipped off the people that there's an informant in the vehicle and you just don't want bullets flying at your car. In circumstances such as this, you need eyes and ears on the ground. You need people in the informal settlements, uh, squatter camps, to, to give you the information on these shack numbers, direct you to the shacks. Because when you get into these townships, you're never gonna find your way to anywhere. They, they can direct you where to go, but you'll never find yourself, it's a maze. Are we, are we expecting any guns? No, dog, like I'm telling you, those they don't keep guns in checks and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? That just laying low and stuff. That, that's his way he hide after doing all this. Yeah, that's his house. So yeah. what's our real danger here? Is somebody gonna get stabbed? I'll be honest with you, man. It's the hood, it's the, it's the informal settlement. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's the project. You just need to, need to be to be more careful, you know what I'm saying? You might find some hoodlums here, some cassie reds. You know, just be more careful. But in case if you need more backup, I'll, I'll stick around. You know, I'll watch your bank. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Tembisa is a notorious township. There are there are hardened criminals that live in and around Tembisa. Even the the residents of Tembisa themselves live in fear. The camera crew, what we want is you guys, you guys stay close to us. Don't uh, don't drift from us. And there'll be somebody covering you from behind. So just uh, watch yourselves. Let's put this car around so once we get the suspect, we can get out of here. Well, when you roll into Tembisa and you you know look at it from the top, it looks it just looks like a honeycomb of of uh, informal dwellings and shacks, and uh, it just kind of gives you that dangerous, ominous vibe. Uh, you know that things go down there and something could happen to you there. When running through that maze, you don't know who's waiting around the next shack with a knife or a rock in their hand or perhaps a gun. So, you know, you really, you really are risking it all by running in there to bring somebody out of there. Let's move. Let's roll. Yeah, I was in close contact with Zane on the radio. He told me when we were, a, when we were pulling in there that we must just get out our vehicles and push straight in before the, before the news spreads through that we're actually coming after the shack. When you're rolling into a township like Tembisa, you've got to always be on top of your game. You've got to always check your surroundings. You've got to have each other's backs because that community pulls so fast together. These criminals not only affect um, the surrounding complexes, but they affect the, the locals in the township as well. So what I think happened, Jay, is the guys got word when we started moving through the township, you know, Bush Telegraph travels quite quickly. So when we started moving and the, and the, the shack was pointed to us, the, the mob started, ga started gathering. So this guy, this suspect that we were after, not only were we gonna arrest him, but his life was in danger. So we might have to protect him. We arrived at the, at the, the location, the shack that, that the, said, the said suspect was living in. Joe pointed out the shack and he, and he manned the back so no one would break through the back of the shack. Me and JP went in through the front. I went through the door first. The suspect was sitting on the couch when he saw me, he broke out the front of the shack. Um, a chase then ensued. We were hot on his tail. I mean, JP was on him, Zane was on him, and it actually had a train effect. The more team members we have, it's a lot easier for us to apprehend a suspect. I mean, it's easier for the camera crew to keep up with us because we, we're seeing, because it's guys a bit behind, they're lagging a bit. You see what corners to it, you can see the dust. So the guys know exactly where to go. We outran the camera guy, he ended up getting lost. He took a wrong left or whatever it was right, and we lost him also. As, you, as we were running, I could kind of see more or less that he was heading towards the main road. Um, so I made a decision to branch off just quickly before. Although it can be dangerous, I can run into trouble of my own. Um, you know, we've got to catch the guy as quickly as possible and it just wasn't happening. Yeah, 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 yeah
Yeah, adrenaline was, adrenaline was pumping. We grabbed this guy, we finally got this guy, we pushed him into the vehicle, we closed the doors, we we're just wanting to get out of there before the crowd surround us. Then JP came flying up to me and Zane. Where's the rest of the crew? The, the camera, camera crew! Aspect. Having a camera crew following you around all the time is eventually they become invisible. You don't know with me. You don't know with me. Stupid. What the fuck is wrong with you, soldier? Oh, come on. Go, 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 go. What's up with your boy? I think Joe showed his true colours today. Um, he, you know, it's not his duty to have our back uh, or any of the camera crew's back. But uh, I'm really starting to warm up to this guy. Um, if it wasn't for him pulling this camera guy out of the township there, who knows what would have happened? No, you the car again, huh? no I'm only buying two suckers. Once we had uh, loaded the suspect and JP found the cameraman. You know, there were, there were a lot of kids around there and the community members watching, seeing what's going on. So, you know, I went, in a, I, I went to one of the local vendors, uh, asked him to give me a hundred packets of chips and some suckers. We left as heroes there. They kind of got a feeling that we're the good guys and they could trust us. Uh, perhaps the next time we have to go in there, we won't be seen as outsiders or strangers, we'd be seen as, as heroes in the community that are coming to clean up the place. Tembisa is a very dangerous place and, you know, by seeing the smiles on the kids' faces and the joy that a little gift can bring them, you know, it gives us a little bit of hope that maybe the, the youth of tomorrow has got a future. Yeah, so we've gotten reports uh, of some uh, youngsters, skateboarders, uh, being unruly in the park, um, possibly smoking uh, some marijuana. The youth in South Africa are just like anywhere else in the world. They like to have a good time, hang out with their mates, you know, cause a little bit of trouble. These kids, uh, you know, they do a bit of skateboarding, they get together with their friends, you know, they want to show off, so they get a little bit loud, we'll get get rude, that kind of thing. So we're just gonna go sort them out. Yeah, we received a complaint um, from one of the ladies that was walking in the park that um, the kids were swearing at her and that uh, they were playing loud music. Okay, so this is the park we're gonna, we got the report from. We're just gonna stop here and go check it out. Once we, once we got there, we could actually hear the music pumping and we took a walk in. Guys, guys, stop scaring. Stop. Hey, what? Whoa, what's going it's on? It's getting man? illegal. Nah, no, man. Hey, dog, oh. hey, guys. Just trying to skate, dude. So it's a bit of a catch 22 situation. Um, you know, you want the kids to be able to have a place where they can come and relax and do a bit of skateboarding and that kind of a thing instead of being on the streets. Come, guys. Hey, yo. Listen, guys, we're getting reports here that uh, you guys are swearing at the guys uh, walking their dogs and the families. What? Yeah. What? Who said, said that? that? <laughs> what? Who said that? We got a phone call. Man. No, no man. Dude, that's no, that's, who said that? 
show us who said that. Yeah, because there's oh, no there's one here. Around you. Phone calls, phone calls. Yeah, man. no, man. Tough guy. No, this is a family you're place, guys. You're a telephone no, tough no, guy. No, no, Come on, what? As we started talking and started running their mouths, you know, obviously trying to be big around their mates and all that kind of stuff. I don't want this here. I mean, you guys are skating here. It's fine, man. Who are you? No, we can't do this. You just a random guy. Yeah, man. Just looking, man. Yeah, well, at one stage, one of the guys got up into my face, you know, um, mouthing off at me. Uh, I had my man hand on my mace, so I wasn't, uh, you know, too hugely concerned about that guy. Okay, turn the music off. I don't know why you need to play the music so loud. This is my jam! This is my jam! This is my jam! What are you gonna do? <laughs> this is my track! There's no one here, even. Nah. This is Look, a you don't see show. me telling you to turn down your music you, in your car. Yeah. Oh. Not in the car, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. But uh, definitely, I was worried about the guys with the skateboards, you know, being hit over the head with the skateboards, not, not a fun experience. You're a tough guy with your little thing. Hey, 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 relax, 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 relax. You don't need to use force. You, you coming here, relax. Well, you coming at me, bro. I'm going to uh, use yeah. force, bro. Don't. <laughs> you got, you got this guy. You got this guy. I'm just standing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. At one point, uh, the main antagonist turned around and looked at his mate and said, "You got this." Um, you know, as if to say that it's time to make your move. Hey, 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 Don't touch our stuff. Don't touch our stuff. <laughs> you don't know. You just ran yeah, a cop in our space. Listen, bro. Am I in your space? Yeah, you're Feel in my nervous. space. <laughs> it's amazing when uh, when there's a camera around how these kids turn into monkeys. So what? Are you telling us to go or what? What are you trying to? No, do? you guys can skate. Okay. Yeah. Right. We just want uh, a little bit more uh, respect for everyone else here as well. All right. Right. There's families here. I know, you know this is your place and whatever, but it's also everyone else's out to be here as well. We're yeah. just skating, man. We're just skating. No, man. We're having fun, no. you know. So the guys did a complete 180 uh, from the time I got there and being defensive about the situation to being cooperative. Skating's keeping you guys off the roads and all that kind of, you know, off the streets and out of the drugs and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. You know, we don't mind that. We want, uh, we just want this place to be for everyone. All right. All right, cool. And by the time we left, you know, we were doing handshakes and uh, getting along nicely. All right. Sure. What? Keep it cool, man. Good. Keep it cool. Hey, man. Thanks hey, man. for your help, hey, man. Man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Handshake. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Four cops! Hey! Yes, bro! Hey, buddy! So, you know, these, uh, these kids need to learn their lesson, you know. Often this is where the problems start. And, uh, you, know, you just gotta keep them in check, yeah. And hopefully one day they become productive citizens. Well, at the end of the day, you know, um, these kids being kids, and it's best to just make the amends, you know, the more we push, the more they're going to push and it's just going to escalate. Oh, look, you know, they're upset that uh, somebody's told them off and, uh, you know, it happens. Oh, f man! What the f my, my attention was on the camera, guys, um, explaining the situation when these f guys threw a milkshake on my car. And as much as it pissed me off, um, they left immediately after that because they knew I was by that time. When all is said and done, uh, it was just a milkshake and kids will be kids. And the harder we push, the harder they push. So it's best to just make an amends and uh, leave it at that. We played a firecracker prank on all the guys in the office. Aside from it being a really good joke, it gives me an idea of how these guys are going to act in a situation. And if I run, just turn around quickly. I just five seconds turn around. I'll shock you in your face. Done. I didn't even find a time, did you? <laughs> Trevor, so far, he's going to be at the back of the pack. Um, he flutters like a fairy.
Looking for class. We've got something for him. Tom thumbs. Hello? You speaking to Klaus? Klaus, I don't know what happens to him, but it, uh, it's all as if uh, everything switches off, so uh, I don't know how useful that's going to be in the team. <laughs> Bully, is that you? It, it's hard to predict the, the emotion that that guy was trying to express. <laughs> Did you know this crack? Did he crack? Nah. Oh, f. <laughs> it was just out of breath on the phone. <laughs> David. Ray, this patient. Yeah, you must be on the phone. Let me sit. Let me sit. Yeah, must be on the phone. Okay. Good cuts. Yeah, that's nice. Man. David doesn't crack under the pressure. He handled the firecracker prank well. It's a nice after stressful day at work to get these guys to be able to laugh at themselves and laugh at each other. The firecrackers is also a good way for me to test who in the team is ready to go into the field. Um, so far, it only looks like I can back, I can rely on David so far. Um, Trevor seems to flutter around like a princess and Klaus seems to go blank. So we're gonna have to work on a lot more pranks and a lot more stressful situations to see how these guys act under fire. Most of the complexes are backed up with uh, the latest technology such as electric fences and uh, motion detectors and cameras which are monitored off-site. On this particular evening we picked up something very interesting. There were a couple of guys um, adamant to get into a complex. and they uh, seem to be intoxicated. These guys were obviously very drunk. Um, they obviously came from a party or something and uh, they just wanted to get inside the complex but they obviously had no right or permission to be there so the guards couldn't let them in. These guys obviously with the amount of alcohol in their blood, they started becoming aggressive. Guards acted perfectly in the scope of their duty, um, didn't let them in, and uh, that's when these guys started to turn violent. The guards pushed their panic button and uh, tried to subdue these guys uh, or tried to deter these guys with a bit of pepper spray. They then retreat back to their guard hut, 
uh, where they can get proper communication and uh, um, backup, um, which was already on the way because of the panic button being pressed. Yeah. The pepper spray didn't hold them back uh, for too long. Basically, when their eyes cleared up a little bit, they just became a little bit more aggressive. Backup was dispatched, and uh, we were the first car on the scene. Myself and Zane arrived, and one of the guys had a baseball bat out. Zane was first out of the car. Uh, the guy with the baseball bat, he was the first one we uh, had to restrain. The baseball bat is the instrument that was going to do the damage. First of all, we tried to defuse the situation, try to calm him down. But we could see there was no talking to this guy. He was uh, seriously in a, in a fit of rage. So uh, we kind of lured him in and Zane took him down and I followed through. Luckily the other guy wasn't as bold uh, and he tried to make a run for it. The two guards immediately assisted when they saw they had the backup. I followed the second guy into the complex. We chased him around the complex for, a, for quite a few minutes. and uh, eventually he ran out of steam and uh, gave himself up. So uh, we arrested him and uh, dragged him back out of the complex. Uh, we still have no idea what these two guys' problem was or what, what they were trying to achieve. but uh, they're going to think twice before picking on security guards again. We got a call uh, about a guy that's apparently running around naked with his uh, tackle out. And uh, we're gonna go check it out. I'm expecting Klaus to go on his hands and knees and start giving mouth to mouth <laughs> resuscitation. <laughs> you are in shock. Yeah? On arrival, we didn't see nothing. With everything looked in the north. I don't see any <laughs> naked people. Yeah. I just do a turn here and go across. No, there, bro, there. Once we drove past this the suspect, we were just looking. We couldn't see anyone, and then he flashed his <laughs> at me. Just showing you, <laughs> bro. <laughs> do you see it? Do you see that? Are you serious, bro? Yeah, he just showed me his He's not naked, but he just showed me his I think he's got his <laughs> He's got his on the fence. And then, <laughs> then I knew what everyone was talking about, why people were funny, because it was pretty disgusting. <laughs> bro, I thought that was a prank. You know, that's a he's, he's getting a kick out of showing the traffic. <laughs> joke. crazy, bro. This guy I've never here. seen this before, bro. This guy here with the coat, just watch, watch his pen. Huh? What you doing? Oh, what the f***, What the f***? Hey, hey, listen here. Listen here. Listen, you wanna f listen. listen. You put, put, put that thing away. Come, bro. Put, the, put that away. Put that away. Come, put it away. Yeah, we don't know if this guy was a little bit, you know, had mental issues or a little bit mentally handicapped. Um, definitely smelled like booze when we got there. Um, he could have been both, um, which could have edged on what he was trying to do. Uh, uh, uh. Stop! 
Go, Bob. Listen, yeah, you listen. Go show somebody else, bro. Go, go. Get I'm not there. Go away, go. man. Really go. Go. You don't need this one. Get away from us, yeah. yeah. Go, go stand you. somewhere else. I was pretty disgusted because once I approached the, the individual, uh, he basically tried to hit me with his and it, was, it wasn't really great because I felt a bit awkward. I even, I even backed off a bit because I didn't feel people were driving past and I didn't want to be associated with that. That's how embarrassed I was. Yeah, Trevor was a little bit embarrassed about this, well, seemed to be a little bit embarrassed about the situation, um, you know, and he laughed about it a little bit, but uh, it really me off you know and uh, it took a lot of self-control not to you know take this guy out or, you know or taser him or whatever it's disgusting what you do go home go home no one wants to see that go home and sleep at the end of the day we got rid of him klaus told him to go away i told him to go away and then he eventually got the point and then put his thing back in his pants and he crossed the road and hopefully he went home we watched him for a little while, but obviously he could have always gone to another road and started doing the shit again. That's f***ing Folks are drunk and they bro. do stupid things and they don't, they just don't understand. Yeah, well, you never know. You know, if you if we had arrested him and put him into a cell, you don't know what the guys there, you know, what kind of criminals are there at that time. You know, he could have been raped. It's rather a small crime when, it, when, you, when you get into a cell with guys that are up for murder and rape. And um, yeah, I don't think he would have. He would have made the knot. That is, that is probably the one of the discussion. I thought, it, I thought it was gonna touch my leg. I thought it was gonna touch my leg. These guys are obviously getting, you know, they get drunk anytime. It doesn't matter day, night. It doesn't matter what day of the week. I think he maybe had a little bit too much to drink, and he thought he was funny. It's World Cup, bro. People are getting drunk. <laughs> People are getting wasted tonight. If we find him again, you know, we'll obviously we'll take for the action. I'm sure Trev would love to see him again. JB told me I have to meet him tonight uh, somewhere for dinner. He needs to discuss something with me. So I'm just waiting around. Jeez, I don't know what's happening because the whole, this whole week, uh, every time I walk into a room with them and stuff, they all keep quiet and stuff and uh, like I don't feel like comfortable there and I don't feel like I'm wanted. Yeah, I'm not in a good place right now. Uh, don't know what to say. Like the whole week has been kind of like everyone is like talking but like not talking to me. So like I walk into different rooms and everyone just keeps quiet and then they move to a different room and move to a different office and stuff. So I feel, I feel really bad. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, he is, guys. Okay, keep quiet, please. How's it, James? Trev? Yeah? How's it, boy? Listen, I'm Damien to the William Nickel. Okay. Um, I think you better get your boy. I don't have all day to sit here and wait for you. Okay, okay, sweet. I'm about five minutes out. You just hang up on me. It's really weird. Nobody just speaks to me in the boardroom or something like that, so... I don't know what to expect. Like he wants to meet me at a restaurant, like, and he doesn't sound too happy. Eh? He's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually quite. Don't know what to, don't know what to say. JP was saying like uh, that God's not the place for me and stuff like I'm not I don't take work seriously and stuff I joke around too much I came to work late one time so it's just the person I am so when he told me all that stuff and he's like no they don't like it and stuff like that it made me sad it just made me think okay f uh, maybe I read the situation wrong maybe I'm doing something wrong. You think there's a way Trust you, do you, think, do you think you can stand up to the plate while you're giggling? It's like a big joke. Nah. See, this is, see, this is what I'm talking about. See, it's like, it's like life's happening, there's crime happening, people's lives are in danger, but for you, it's a big joke. JB just told me I'm fired, so... I'm
content to the person I am Jesse. Lots of things are going through my head. I don't know what, I don't know what way to begin. Keep your chain. Keep a check, my brother. <laughs> Why? What's happening? You're selling me the corner. Is it? I'm proud of you. You. That's all I can say. <laughs> bro, you put me through suspense. I was, I wanted to cry. I was crying inside. But thank goodness nothing was wrong. <laughs> yep, baby. <laughs> salesman of the court. And for the last four months, uh, I've been the salesman of the thing. I've beaten everyone else. So they threw a little party for me. So it's, it's quite happy. It's quite cool. It's a way they motivate their people and stuff like that. I, I don't know about this. So maybe I should just start working harder and I can get free food more often. from our reaction vehicle. Um, he told us that the, he passed a vehicle on his way to respond to a site. Uh, there was a, a female by herself in this in this vehicle. Uh, we're on our way out to, to check that she's okay and everything. We took it upon ourselves to go check it out and uh, see what she was doing there. Obviously, it's, it was a very dangerous area. Normally, it wouldn't bother me so much to see a girl alone in a car, but in that neighborhood, that's not what you want to be doing. Side of the road and check it out. So when we get out of here, uh, when we get out the car, stay quite close. On approach, JP parked right behind her. I parked a little bit up the road. Where, when I walked towards the car, I could see something was up. She wasn't setting out her car. She was sitting slouched back in in her driver's seat. So it didn't it didn't look good. So Yeah. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm just chilling. Sorry, what are you doing? What's this over here? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. When I opened the box, I found some sort of powder substance. I'm not 100% sure what it was. Um, and the car, the car had a, a, a smell to it. A, it was terrible. So you know. She was obviously, whatever she was doing, she was smoking something in her car. Can you set off? Can you, We're the can security you... company that looks after this area. And we had a report of somebody in their car asleep by themselves here. So we just got to check it out. It looks like you're doing something there that you shouldn't be doing. I don't know whose that is or what that is. So, what the f is going on here? Well, should we take it to here? Look what it is. Let's take it to the police station and then maybe they can tell us what it is. Um, no. Uh, Do you have some sort of identification? Oh, put this, no. Put this with that. What Where did you find that? This what? is like... How did you... What is that? I what is that? I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't know what that is. Okay, well, let's go. What we'll do is we're going to drive your car for you. You don't look like you can drive. We'll drive it just down the road to the police station. We can ask them. That maybe they can tell us what that is. Um. This young lady had dilated pupils um, she didn't know where she was, she didn't know what she was doing. She was clearly high as a kite and lucky for her that we, we found her and not some, some rapists or murderers. There's a, there's a drive out the road Let's pull into a park, one of our vehicles, we'll get the reaction off this competition. Babe, what are you doing? You can't ride the car over. How are you going to escape? We had to help you, but you're making life hard for us. Please turn off the car, get out your car, and let us take you in. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, you've got two options. We phone your parents, I'll drop the will deliver it to your, to your house, we'll give you to your parents, and we can start dealing with your problem, or we can take you to the cop shop where you can spend the night there. How's that for two, two options? Get your cell phone, let's find your parents. Um, I don't have parents, can we find a friend? Who's the friend? Is it a family member? Um, yeah. Let's find the friend. Let's see who the friend is first. If I talk to them, if I'm satisfied, then we won't, we won't take you to the police station. But let's start dealing with your problem. Because over here, as you can see, 
do, do you think this is a safe environment? Do you want it, do you want your body to be found in the f***ing felt over there? No, exactly. So let's get your friend on the line. Let's start getting you some help. There was a lot of movement while we were dealing with the with this girl in her in her vehicle. Um, we saw a number of suspicious characters who passed by the vehicle several times. So who knows what could have happened to this poor girl had we not arrived on time. Do you know Ashley? She drives a silver Peugeot. Yeah, well, she's sitting here in one of our neighborhoods and she's smoking some kind of drug, I don't know what it is, in a, da in a dangerous area in the bush felt here. So, I mean, who are you? You're a friend. Okay, well, we need one or two of her friends here and we need to establish that she's going to get home safely, firstly. And then secondly, we're going to have to put her on some kind of a program. Otherwise, I'm going to just take her, impound her car, uh, take her to the cop shop, and she's going to be arrested and she can spend the night and you can start finding a lawyer. You know, your friends are coming here because they care about you and there's lots of people that care about you. So you need to really uh, pull it together. And I mean, there's, there's outreach programs that, that we're involved in. We can get you in touch with the right people. So, you know, there's definitely a, a lot of options. Once I started speaking to some of the things I was saying really at home and she started crying and I could really tell that um, she, she kind of felt that um, she needed help, she needed someone, and maybe some of the words that I said to her made her realize that she can, she can find someone to help her. Prison's no place for a young person, especially someone who's possibly a bit mentally unstable. Um, we, we really got through to this girl and she agreed uh, for us to take her to a place where she could, uh, um, where there are more options for her. She's currently at a rehabilitation center at this point in time and, and she is doing well.